So they detained me and a, another college age girl in the immigration area for about a half hour while they tried to sort things out. And they asked us the same question over and over. We felt like we were being interrogated. They kept asking us, where is your onward boarding pass? Where is your onward boarding pass? Over and over again. And uh, finally the in interrogator got a phone call and the girl sitting next to me said, these people are effing idiots. And I said, shh, I want to get out of here. I just want to leave this place. Um, Hi, thanks for watching Jason Adam TV on YouTube. If you haven't, uh, please give us a thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and if you can, share our link um, to other people. So today's topic is about uh, my experience in China, probably the first and last time I will ever be in China. And um, this actually was Partly, it was a comedy of errors. Um, so, to preface the story, I was flying back home uh, to see my family um, in 2015, and I was flying on United Airlines. Um, at the time, United was still flying a very old fleet of Boeing 747s. Um, and there's nothing wrong with the 747. I loved the plane. It's a very stable uh, plane to fly in. But the planes, the 747s that United had at the time were uh, nearing the end of their lifespan. And they, they had technical glitches quite often from what I read online. So, um, so it was... You know, at the time, I, I was focused on getting the cheapest ticket back home possible, and that was the cheapest one I could find online at the time. And the flight entailed uh, two layovers, I think. Uh, one, on the way there, there was a layover in Beijing, and then uh, one in Washington, uh, Dulles International Airport, um, and then uh, flight to uh, Nashville on the way to Tennessee. So, uh, so yeah, on the way to America, um, we didn't really have any technical errors with um, with the plane on the trip to America. But uh, when we stopped in Beijing, uh, it's a pretty short flight from Taiwan to Beijing, not not very far at all. And uh, we arrived maybe 1.30 or 2 p.m. in the afternoon. The, the first thing I noticed was that um, we were told on the plane that we would need to go to the transfer desk to get our boarding passes for the next uh, flight. So uh, when we got to the airport in Beijing, we went to the transfer's desk and there was no one there. This is the main international airport in Beijing. I don't know if this was a staffing problem with United or, or it was a problem with the, with the airport, but uh, also we could not find anyone who spoke English to help us. Uh, there was a group of us transfer passengers uh, who were wandering around the airport. Luckily, we had one woman with us uh, who was fluent in Chinese and English, and uh, she translated. And we finally, after about 30 minutes, got someone over to the transfer desk. And when we got to the transfer desk, uh, and we finally got some employee at the transfer desk, they informed us that the uh, boarding pass printing machine was broken. So they had to hand write, I've never heard of this before, but they had to hand write each passenger's boarding pass. Uh, and it took forever. Uh, so I was thinking, wow, this is unique. I've, as many times as I've flown, I've never had this happen before. Uh, then we had to go through security. Uh, 
before we went to the gate for our transfer flight. And at most airports, you know, it's routine. Um, you go through the line, you take the stuff out of your pockets, take off your belt, maybe your shoes in some places, and and you go through the metal detector and screening machine and, and you're on your way. And sometimes, depending on how busy the airport is, uh, it takes longer than usual. Well, in Beijing, they had a separate area before you went through the metal detectors and all that. And uh, it was, the line was immensely long. I have yet to this day to see a security line as long as that line. And actually, I was worried that I was going to miss my transfer flight. So I got at the back of this line and inched my way forward and I was wondering what is taking so long and when I finally got to the station it was manned by a young girl who looked no older than 18 uh, and her job was to examine your passport and examine you there was no computer set up this girl would take your passport stare at your picture stare at you stare at your picture, stare at you. And this would go on for a few minutes for each person in the line. So, uh, yeah, by the time I got to the metal detectors, I was in a trot because uh, it was getting close to boarding time for my transfer flight. Um, so I thought this is the oddest thing. You know, I've dealt with the TSA. I've dealt with security in many different countries. I've never had something like that happen before. Uh, it, it seemed totally outdated. I mean, the passport examination system, uh, time wasting, and just out and out ridiculous. Okay, so I flew to... Um, America without any further issues. Uh, it took a very long time with the layovers. It took probably around 24 hours. And then on the return trip, that's when the big problem started to happen. This is the worst trip I've ever taken in my life. So, um, and part of it is due to United. Now, let me say United has improved over the years. Ever since that incident with the doctor who was dragged off the plane and bloodied up by, uh, by police after he had paid for a seat uh, and was bumped off the plane, uh, they, have, they have gotten their stuff in order. And my other flights with United have been okay. But this trip, from Nashville back to Taiwan was one for the books. It was horrible. So it started out, uh, I had to get up very early in the morning, which is usual for a cheap flight. And uh, we flew from Nashville International to Chicago O'Hare um, International Airport. And we probably arrived around, um, I'd say 9.30 or 10 in the morning in Chicago. Um, so the first issue I had was the transfer. I don't know if you've ever been to O'Hare Airport, but it is the most confusing airport I've ever been in. Um, I followed the signs for transfer passengers, and I ended up in a, a large hall that stretched on forever. And um, there was a man in a safety vest, you know, one of those reflective safety vests near an exit door that led to the tarmac. And he was shouting at me, over here, over here. He had no sign saying that he worked with United or uh, I could not tell that he worked, he was an official that worked for the airline or the airport. Uh, he was ju he just looked like you know your regular uh, janitorial staff employee. He was wearing a reflective vest. Adam, I actually experienced the same thing, and uh, the old guy, the janitor, right, was so I, I couldn't understand what he said, and uh, um, 
I call it got so frustrated and I described uh, the, the airport kind of like a you know the gate magic gate uh, in the movie Harry Potter how do you call that oh the the train uh, platform that's hidden uh, yeah it's a magical train platform in Harry Potter yeah the the door to the to your uh, gate is is kind of like that at O'Hare is yeah. so anyway there was this old guy that looked like a janitor in a reflective vest shouting at me to come there and it looked like he was standing in uh, an exit doorway that led to a stairwell down to the tarmac and I was thinking you know am I going to be arrested if I go through this door am I going to be arrested for interfering with a flight crew or something you know I, I knew passengers are not really supposed to be down on the tarmac so I hesitated for a couple of minutes before I finally walked over to him and went through the door and sure enough that was the way to get to the gate for my transfer flight. I'd never seen that before. Of course, I'd never been at O'Hare before at the time. Um, and Oh, it called Platform Night and the Three Quarters. Okay, the Harry Potter platform is called Platform Nine and Three Quarters. I'd forgotten that. But yeah, finding the platform at O'Hare is kind of like that. Um, so I got to my plane and um, they boarded us and I knew something was wrong when we sat there for an hour and didn't go anywhere uh, and finally the pilot came on and said uh, ladies and gentlemen we're having uh, some technical difficulties with the uh, entertainment system on board the aircraft uh, thank you for your patience uh, we hope to be in the air soon um, so we sat there and we sat there and we were thinking and people started telling the flight attendants look we don't need the movies we just want to get in the air and get on our way because this was a flight from O'Hare to um, Shanghai International Airport in China and we knew the longer we sat there on the tarmac the more likely it was that we'd miss our connecting flights at Shanghai and they'd have to be rescheduled and it would be a huge mess because uh, our connecting flight at Shanghai was one of the last flights of the day uh, so we knew we'd have to probably stay overnight if we didn't get in the air soon so um, the air uh, the pilot came back on the intercom system and said we understand that you know um, the entertainment system is not considered essential but it also includes the call buttons for the flight attendants and therefore it's considered a security issue we cannot take off with this problem and so they deboarded the plane they gave us vouchers uh, that were enough to get you know a cheap lunch like at Burger King and and so um, I remember that, that, that you told me you were taken to a police station. That well, that was later when we got to Shanghai. Oh okay. Okay, um, and then so we we ate lunch, and they reboarded us after lunch. We thought, wow, we're going to get back in the air. You know, you disappeared for many days. And I didn't know where you were. It was the time because difference. Not until when your aunt, one of your aunts, sent me a, an email. Do you know me that uh, you tried to contact her? Do you know how hard it is to get a message through in China without a VPN? I don't have a Weibo account or any of that crap. I'm so nervous. Okay. So anyway. Uh, we reboarded the plane and we thought, oh, we're going to take off. Then the pilot came back on the intercom and explained that the flight attendants, uh, once we reached Shanghai, would be over their allotted time. Um, evidently, they can't work over so many hours in a row and uh, due to labor laws. And... Um, so they told us that the flight attendant they'd have to find a new set of flight attendants they said they were in negotiations with the flight crew from uh, a flight that was supposed to take off and go to germany uh, and they said we'll let you know how that works out 
Then the pilot, uh, maybe a half hour later, came back on and said, uh, the flight attendants have contacted their union lawyer, so it looks like we won't be getting a flight crew. And he said, in a few minutes, uh, the pilots will be over there allotted time and so we are going to have to find a whole new flight crew new flight attendants new pilots and so they went ahead and deboarded the plane and we found out that we would have to wait until around 7:30 or 8 that evening to take off we'd been there since about 10 o'clock in the morning uh, they gave us another set of vouchers that covered our dinner, a cheap dinner. Finally, we got in the air that evening around 8 or 8.30 and on the flight to Shanghai. We arrived in Shanghai sometime after midnight um, Chinese time. And that's when the real fun began. Of course, we were all exhausted. Uh, and it was a mixed flight. It was a flight full of mostly Chinese, but also foreigners. And um, when we got to the airport, we were told that we should go to the United Desk to get hotel vouchers for the night because we were going to have to spend the night at the airport hotel. So I got finally got to the United Desk, and there was a line of Chinese people in front of me who were arguing and yelling and screaming at the um, attendant at the desk for because from what I understood they thought the airline should cover hotel vouchers for everyone even people who were not transferring on to another destination and it probably took me an hour and a half to get my hotel vouchers um, finally, I got to my hotel room, which looked like a room from the set of a bad porn movie. Yeah. It, it had a round bed with mirrors surrounding it. And I examined the sheet carefully before I laid down on the bed because I, w I was looking for stains because I did not, it did not look like a clean hotel and it smelled, it reeked of cigarette smoke. You could tell the last person there was smoking and I thought the first thing I've got to do is contact my family and let them know that I'm still alive and everything's okay. Back then they didn't have Wi-Fi on the planes. So I get on the Chinese internet and find out you can't use Google. You can't use your Gmail. You can't use Facebook. You can't use Facebook Messenger. You, you can't use any of those things that you're used to using um, to send a message. And I thought, well, good grief, how am I going to get a message out of here? And finally, I found an old email address that I hadn't used in years, and I happened to remember the password to, uh, that wasn't blocked by China's Great Firewall and got an email out to my family to let them know I was still alive and everything was okay and what had gone on. But I skipped over the part with immigration. I had to go through immigration before I got to the, uh, the hotel room. And the problem was, evidently, immigration didn't have a record of my new transfer flight. I don't know if that was their fault or United's fault, but uh, of course I missed my transfer flight in Shanghai to, to the uh, Taiwan International Airport, uh, Taoyuan International Airport. And so they detained me and a, another college age girl in the immigration area for about a half hour while they tried to sort things out. and. They asked us the same question over and over. We felt like we were being interrogated. They kept asking us, where is your onward boarding pass? Where is your onward boarding pass? Over and over again. And uh, finally, the in interrogator got a phone call, and the girl sitting next to me said, these people are effing idiots. And I said, shh, I want to get out of here. I just want to leave this place. Um, Finally, they got in touch with United and found that United had rescheduled our transfer flights to Taiwan 
before the next day and they let us go so by the time I got to my hotel room oh man it was probably 3 a.m. in the morning and I, the flight was at 9 30 in the morning so I probably after I figured out how to get the email out I probably got just a few hours sleep uh, it was a ridiculous ridiculous situation and I was so glad to be back in Taiwan let me tell you um, I've never had such a hard time before then or since then um, but yeah I really do think that the, that the way that the Chinese authorities handled it was uncalled for um, instead of asking us where our boarding passes were over and over again they could have taken our word that that the airline had rescheduled them while we were in in the air and we didn't have a paper boarding pass yet for the next flight just uh, just bureaucracy too much bureaucracy um, so I have never had a connecting flight in China again and I would not recommend for you to do so either and nowadays they could detain you I mean if if you've made comments on social media which I have since then I've made several comments about the Chinese government on social media um, they could detain you if you didn't have all your I's dotted and your T's crossed um, and you might not see the light of day for a long time so I, I am not going to visit China again in the future uh, unless there's a change of government there so if you'd like you can tell me about your bad experiences on flights or your bad experiences in China uh, just let me know another thing another weird thing about um, the Shanghai Airport um, we also had vouchers for breakfast the next morning and I went to breakfast and the women who were in charge of the breakfast buffet were the most unhappy looking people that I'd ever seen working at a restaurant before um, and very you know there's no good morning no words spoken just steely stares from the employees of the hotel buffet I don't know if it was because um, they knew we were eating from vouchers or or what it was but they were extremely unfriendly and then our connecting flight was on Air China not to be confused with China Airlines which is actually based in Taiwan Air China is based in China and the flight attendants look like they'd been whipped I mean seriously um, my my flight attendant from my section of the plane had tears in her eyes and she looked like she just lost somebody she um, she loved and I, I felt so sorry for her I, I didn't ask for anything during the flight it was only a short flight anyway uh, and I thought well maybe it's just my flight attendant but as I was walking through the plane you know deboarding all of the flight attendants had the same very extremely sad look in their eyes and I don't I honestly don't know why uh, to this day I have no idea uh, maybe they were being forced to work for very little pay but I'm just guessing there I have no idea but I have never seen such a sad flight crew in my life um, so thank you for watching Jason Adam TV if you have any questions or comments or you know if you'd like to refute my experience if you had a great experience you know at the airport in China let me know uh, that's the only time I've flown through Chinese airports before and, and so it's you know um, even though I, I stopped at two different airports there are probably people who have been there many more times than I have all right thank you for watching bye bye